Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you very briefly and in simple way, what are these lipoproteins and uh, what are some of the characteristics of these lipoproteins, what are the different lipoproteins that we have and what we need to know about those uh, lipoproteins. So this is in brief in a simple way. So if you really want to know more in detail about lipoprotein metabolism and all the details about lipoprotein, so kindly check my video which is around 30 to 35 minutes of video the link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing in the upper right corner now what is lipoprotein here so the lipoprotein as the name says lipoprotein it is a component of lipid along with the protein molecule so a lipid which is loaded onto a protein molecule so that is what is called as lipoprotein so why lipid is loaded onto a, a protein molecule here because so that these lipoproteins in order to go from one place to another place so the only way that can be done in our body is the bloodstream so the bloodstream is the one so the blood vessels are the ones which are carrying uh, substances from one organ to another organ so that means blood is basically it's a hydrophilic thing here so any molecule that has to be transported in the blood that has to be largely hydrophilic that is water soluble so as you all know lipids are water insoluble molecules so how to transport water insoluble lipid molecules in the blood only way to do that is somehow keep that in a soluble form and the way to do that is load that lipid onto a protein molecule where the protein is keeping the solubility of your overall molecule and you can easily transport that molecule from one place to another place and that is what is a lipoprotein is so if i would like to draw here so if, if this is a lipoprotein molecule so outside the surface it will be covered by apolipoprotein molecule apolipoproteins and inside there will be lipid molecule here so the lipid is inside so kind of like triacylglycerol cholesterol ester phospholipid so all these lipid molecules will be safely buried inside and outside it is a apolipoproteins and these apolipoproteins they will interact with water molecule and thereby keep the solubility of a lipoprotein so that's how lipoproteins are made here now what are the different types of lipoproteins we have and what are their major apolipoproteins present in these lipoproteins so the lipoproteins there are a few uh, important ones and the first lipoprotein that i would like to explain is chylomicrons chylomicron so the chylomicron it is synthesized in the small intestine so that means whenever we eat food which has got a lipid thing so the lipid is digested in the intestine uh, in the help of emulsification process so the digestion and absorption of lipid video is there in the description below you can watch it later now the simple lipids that are absorbed into the intestine so once they are inside the intestine they are re-esterified and then they will be loaded on to apo lipoprotein b48 so the major apolipoprotein that is present in chylomicron is uh, APO B48. Now this APO B48 it is synthesized in the small intestine and that is done by using the mRNA for APO B100. So the APO B100 mRNA it is synthesizing APO B48 that means 48% of this mRNA is undergoing translation process. Uh, by the mechanism known as mRNA editing. So anyway, with the help of APOB48, so the lipids that are absorbed into the enterocyte esterified and then they will be loaded on to APOB48 to make a chylomicron and chylomicron is secreted into the lymphatics. Why? Because chylomicron is a bigger in size. So it has got a higher diameter. So it is difficult for chylomicron to be secreted in the portal system that is why it is secreted into lymphatics so the chylomicrons gets into the lymphatics from there it is carried to different tissues now that is what is chylomicron chylomicron is uh, bigger in size so this is the biggest lipoprotein that we have so it is synthesized in the intestine 
and the major apolipoprotein present over it is APOB48. Of course, it has got APOC2 and other things. So, for that, I have another video. The link for that video is there in the description below. Now, let's move on to see what is our next uh, uh, lipoprotein. So, the next lipoprotein we have is a VLDL. Now, VLDL it is synthesized in the liver. Liver is the one which will synthesize a very low density lipoprotein. That's what is VLDL. So, what liver does, uh, does is so whenever we consume more carbohydrate diet, so, so this glucose, excess glucose, it can be converted into fatty acid. Eventually, fatty acid becomes part of triacylglycerol. And also some of the glucose is diverted into cholesterol formation, which is converted into cholesterol ester. And the uh, fats that are coming from the chylomicron uh, into the liver, so they will also be loaded on to VLDL formation. So VLDL synthesis, it happens in the liver and the major apolipoprotein present in VLDL is APOB100. So that means APOB100 mRNA in the liver undergoes 100% translation process and you get APOB100 protein. This is the major apolipoprotein present over VLDL molecule. Of course, it has so many other APO lipoproteins but the major one that I am saying here is APOB100. That is what is a VLDL. So VLDL is synthesized and secreted by the liver into the circulation. Thereby, the content of VLDL it will be taken up by other tissues. Let's uh, briefly let me tell you what is the major content in chylomicron. So the major content in chylomicron is triacylglycerol, and that is all coming from outside that is in the food so the tag is the major content in chylomicron like that vldl major content is again tag triacylglycerol is the major content in vldl which is uh, synthesized in the liver uh, our next white uh, lipoprotein is uh, ldl molecule low density lipoprotein molecule now the low density lipoprotein molecule it is synthesized in the circulation itself how low density lipoprotein is synthesized in the circulation. So when the VLDL is getting into the circulation, so this VLDL eventually it will undergo metabolism in the uh, endothelium of the blood vessels and eventually VLDL is going to lose some of the triacylglycerol and become LDL molecule, low density lipoprotein molecule. So what is the major apolipoprotein present in low density lipoprotein and that is APOB100 again. So, VLDL is the one which is converted to LDL, that means it retains APOB100, that is the major apolipoprotein and that is the only apolipoprotein present over LDL molecule. And if you look at the content of LDL, so the LDL is rich in cholesterol ester, that is one of the major content in LDL molecule. So, that's, the, that's what is about LDL. So, LDL eventually it will be taken up by uh, peripheral tissues which needs cholesterol ester. So, all the peripheral tissues that needs cholesterol ester, they will express what is called as LDL receptors over the surface and thereby LDL will get in by receptor mediated endocytosis. Now, our uh, fourth important chylomyomis lipoprotein is a HDL molecule, high density lipoprotein. Now, the high density lipoprotein, it is synthesized in two tissues. One is liver other is in the small intestine. So the liver and small intestine has got an ability to synthesize high density lipoprotein. Why liver and small intestine can synthesize HDL? It is because the liver and small intestine, they can synthesize a APO lipoprotein called APOA1. And this is the major APO lipoprotein that is present in HDL molecule. So APOA1 is synthesized in the liver and small intestine and then that's why liver and small intestine can synthesize HDL high density lipoprotein. Now if you look at what is the content, what is the composition of high density lipoprotein, it depends on what type of high density lipoprotein it is because we have a nascent discoidal high density lipoprotein, we have a high density lipoprotein 2, we have high density lipoprotein 3. So depending on that content in the high density lipoprotein can vary. But uh, simply put together, so high density lipoprotein can have more of phospholipid and it has got uh, cholesterol ester and also it has got triacylglycerol. These are the things that can be present in high density lipoprotein. Now, what is the major role of high density lipoprotein here? 
So the high density lipoprotein it is participating in a process called as the reverse cholesterol transport mechanism. So what is reverse cholesterol transport mechanism? Reverse cholesterol transport mechanism is it is the transport of cholesterol, excess cholesterol that is present in the peripheral tissues back to the liver. So usually what happens, liver is the one which will synthesize cholesterol and it is going to send that cholesterol to the peripheral tissue by putting it into VLDL, VLDL is converted to IDL, IDL is converted to LDL and LDL is taken up by the peripheral tissues. What, that is what is onward journey of cholesterol with the help of VLDL, LDL and into the peripheral tissue from the liver. Now what is reverse cholesterol transport? Whenever the peripheral tissues have got more cholesterol, that cholesterol is sent back to the liver or to other organs and that is what is referred as a reverse cholesterol mechanism. It is basically you are transporting excess cholesterol present in the peripheral tissues uh, back to the liver. So it's a return journey of cholesterol from peripheral tissues to the liver. That is why it is called as reverse cholesterol transport mechanism and the major role here it is done by high density lipoprotein. That is why sometimes we loosely term high density lipoprotein as a good cholesterol and L density lipoprotein as a bad cholesterol. It is a loosely applied term. Uh, as such, there is no uh, bad and there is no good here. Only thing is it is bad if it is excess. Anything that is in excess beyond our body needs is obviously it is bad. So if there is excess LDL in the circulation, that is bad because it can give rise to atherosclerosis and cardiovascular events. So in that sense, they call it as uh, LDL cholesterol is a bad cholesterol, but it is uh, in strict term, it is not really the bad one as long as you have a good quantity, a normal uh, concentration of LDL cholesterol. So these are some of the things that are present in lipoproteins. This is in brief, in a simple way. For more detailed information, so kindly, as I said before, kindly watch my video on uh, lipoprotein metabolism. Link for that video is there in the description below. So this is what is all about uh, lipoproteins. I hope this video has helped you to get into the lipoprotein metabolism, to get an idea about lipoprotein metabolism, at least to know what all the major lipoproteins that we have in the circulation like chylomicrons, VLDL, LDL and IDL, uh, sorry HDL and what all the major epilipoproteins in them, what is the major content in them and where all these things are synthesized and uh, secreted into. So this is what is all about lipoprotein metabolism. So I hope this video has helped you to briefly look at lipoproteins and uh, for more details as I said so you can uh, look at the detailed video on uh, the link below. So thanks for watching and if you have any question, any request for additional videos, you can put that in the comment box. I'm going to make video on that as and when I get uh, time to do that. Uh, thanks for watching again and uh, see you in my next video. Till then, good take care.